Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to propagate softwood cuttings from trees. Hopefully this wind isn't gonna mess up the sound, but what I have here is, this is my sample scissors. This is what I use to take uh, tissue samples from the vines down in the vineyard. So what I'm going to do is just get this cleaned up. I don't want any spores or anything on this because once I take these cuttings they're going to go into four inch pots. Where's my four inch pots? It's quite the mess in here because I've been like bringing stuff in here when the rain starts. We've had so much rain lately. Oh here's the four inch pots. So I'm going to set up I'm going to probably take like six cuttings and I'll have the pots set up in here. I'm going to go get them. I got to take the gator to go get them. They're down at the end of the road. The neighbors have uh, let me take some cuttings from a, well, it's kind of a messed up tree. I'll show you that in a little bit. But now with this clean, I think I'll just bring this soaked in alcohol along. I have some fresh rooting hormone. This is the gel type. They say you're supposed to always use fresh every year. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't want to take any chances. I'm going to have to study up on that a bit more and see if that's actually true. At any rate, this is fresh rooting hormone in the gel form. So I will be dipping the stuff in that, or dipping the, the cuttings in that when I get back. So what I'm going to do now is make a mix of half vermiculite, a little bit of perlite added to it, and then some potting mix, which potting mix is almost always, let's see what the ingredients are in this. Okay, it's got a wetting agent and it has... 95% peat moss. So it's basically peat moss with a wetting agent, and but it's more finely ground than the stuff you get in a, in a bale. So 50% that, 50% that roughly, and this has a little bit of uh, fertilizer in it, so I'm not going to be adding any fertilizer at all. So I'm going to mix up four pots of that, I believe. Actually, I'll just mix up a, a bag. This bag's about half full. I'll just add uh, vermiculite to get it full. And then uh, I'll mix four up to start with, but I might come back with six cuttings. So I'll be able to quickly make some more if I need to. So let's get started on that. All right, while this is soaking up water, I'm going to grab this stuff. I'll get this nice and clean right before I take my cuttings. And we will run down to the end of the road and snip off some shoots. Okay, here is our subject. 
Now what I want is shoots that are at least six inches long so they have enough stored energy to uh, make it long enough to grow some roots but not over 10 inches long which is the point that they're gonna start getting woody and it won't grow roots and there's not a whole lot like that on here they're all up on this branch right here. Oh, there's one over there. So I got a few. One, two, three. Yeah, there's plenty. Okay, there's just not, not many over here. So what we have here is, it looks like about a five or six inch tree. Now it's a little smaller than that one. That the person who used to own this land cut it off because it was right in front of where he wanted to build this little shack. So he cut it off and this re-sprouted. And I don't know how many years it's been going. This is a burr oak and they, they have this real funky cork-like wood. But burr oak is what I need on my property. So the people who just bought this land, who own land over here as well, they have allowed me to take some cuttings off of this. I don't know if they're going to keep this or not. I'm not sure it's really worth it. They have other burr oaks back in here. so And they can take cuttings from any of them if they wanted cuttings. But I don't know if they're going to do that or not. Or they could keep taking cuttings from this forever if they wanted to uh, get some burr oaks on their land. But their land is uh is mainly woods right now so i don't know how many trees they'll be planting if any so standing up on a stump here i will have access to this upper part oh and there's also the fact that this is right under two other oak trees so it's not in a good spot yeah, this would be best used as just a, as a bank for taking cuttings. Probably do it for a few years before you would damage it. Okay, so I need six cuttings. Let me go get my, my scissors, sterilize that once again, and get to it. Wiped it off on my shirt and go take some cuttings. All right, I need cuttings that have at least three leaves on them, and I want something that looks fairly nice. These have been chewed on, that's not going to hurt it much, but. this one that's one two Five and one more. Where are you? Here we are. Six. Okay, I'm going to rush these back and get them in their pots. Okay. 
get these things potted. Okay, so pluck one out of here. What I am going to do, you want at least three leaves on it. I have a very small leaf at the bottom, and then I have a medium one after that. I'm going to bury this thing up to about here. So I'm just going to remove the bottom two leaves, and I'm going to make a fresh cut on there. Well, I'm going to actually I'm going to go right to that one there. And my rooting hormone is in here. This particular tree, a burr oak, can have gigantic... Oh, jeez. Oh. Hi, kitty. I'm busy, kitty. Okay, I had to get that cat. She, she's a real big whiner, and she wants me to pet her. Luckily, the other cat don't make so much noise. I can just pet them. All right, I'm going to poke a hole, get that down in there, and firm it up. So I want, oh, geez, this is not going to stand up very well because of the size of these leaves. I just don't want these flapping around. Oh, this, uh, I forgot. This method, the normal method, wants you to cut each of the leaves in half. So that makes it easier to, uh, easier to pot, but I believe that also keeps it from transpiring too much of its moisture. I believe that's what that's for, but that is the method. Uh, you cut it, cut all the leaves in half, and then dip it and stick it in there. So let's do another one. The other version I'm going to use this stuff on, which is uh, wilt stop and I'm going to try to do one that does not have a bag over it. I'll be putting these into a bag in a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of that leaf, cut the leaves in half, Dip it in the rooting hormone, get a good amount on it, poke me a hole, and jab it in. And then I'm going to firm it really well around that. The biggest problem with these uh, softwood cuttings like this is having them dry out before they can shoot roots. So cutting, cutting the leaves in half and putting a bag over them, all that stuff is designed to help them retain moisture until they can create some roots. But the problem is when you put a bag over the top of these, I've had it several times now where it gets uh, yellow, or yellow, gray mold in the bag, and it, once you got mold, it's, they're pretty much shot. Okay, got a good amount on there. Now, for the last three, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the leaves full. I'm still going to take off these bottom two and get nice and close to that nodule there. And what I'm going to do is cover up this bottom part so I don't get any spray on it. And I'm going to spray it with this wilt stop. Okay, I'm going to recut this end just in case I got some wilt stop on it. And I think the next time I will just cut the end after spraying that because you, you do not want that on the end because it, it's not going to allow water to get in there. So these that were sprayed with the wilt stop will not go into a bag and I'm hoping they don't dry out. Oh, it looks like we got some kind of gall on these. Yeah, it's on this lower branch too. Hopefully that's not going to affect things. Alright, well let me spray this first. Okay, that should do it. Now... I'm going to cut these ends off now that the wilt stop is sprayed on there. And give it a good dip in the rooting hormone and poke it into the soil. So I've never done it like this before. And I'm hoping it works because when you put them in the bag there is just so much of a, a chance that it's gonna mold if it works like this that'll be great okay last one okay had a little bit of a camera malfunction there I put these three in bags these are the ones that had the leaves cut in half and they did not get the wilt stop spray on them. This is the standard method. You don't want the leaves touching the bag, but that is nearly impossible. I don't know any way of doing it. Um, so you just try your best to keep the bag from touching the leaves because the bag's going to have condensation on it. And if that gets on the leaves, they can get moldy and that'll ruin the whole thing and that's that's what happens a lot of the time is you get mold when you have them in bags like this i haven't heard any anybody mention that before but that is what happens a lot which is why i'm hoping that this method works the wilt stop and not cutting the leaves i might try cutting the leaves and using wilt stop but the main thing is not being in a bag. So hopefully this works and then I'll never have to do that again. But in the end, both of these could fail. So only time will tell how this stuff is going to work out. If you want to see the progress of these, uh, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. That way you'll be notified when I post new videos. A thumbs up would be great as well. And... If you have any questions about any of this stuff, make sure to put them in the comments below. I generally answer all questions. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.